Welcome to Hill Country Homilies, weekly homilies from Holy Annunciation Orthodox Church in Liberty Hill, Texas. Holy Annunciation is an old calendar Orthodox Church, sharing the faith of the apostles and the love of Christ with all who seek His truth. Now let's listen to this week's homily. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. We gather today on this blessed feast, the first feast of the church year, to commemorate the birth of the Virgin Mother of God, the Theotokos, who will give birth to the incarnate Christ. The story of the nativity of the Theotokos is not told in the Holy Scripture. The oldest extant source of the account of her birth is found in the Proto-Evangelium of James, written around 145 A.D. And the Proto-Evangelium of James is an interesting story in its own right. It's not scripture. In fact, it was expressly excluded from the canon of scripture by various councils. And and yet it was incredibly popular during its time. It was a, a popular accounting that gave to the faithful more information about the life of the Virgin. And we know that it was incredibly popular because to this day, over 150 original copies in the Greek still survive. And it's been found in numerous other languages in the biblical uh, apostolic seas. Um, It's been found in Africa, it's been found in the Middle East, it was an incredibly popular account of the infancy of the Virgin and her life before we pick up with the Nativity of Christ. And so the book itself, although it's not canon and it's to be considered apocryphal, it does contain within it much of the story of her birth as we celebrate it here on the Feast of the Nativity. The Proto-Evangelium tells of the account of her birth to the righteous Joachim and Anna, Mary's parents that were childless for many, many years. She was considered a barren woman, as we hear in the various hymns, uh, particularly at Vespers. But they remained faithful to God, yet their prayers for a child went unanswered. And one day we're told that Joachim came to the temple to make an offering. He was actually turned away by the high priest who chastised him for his lack of children. And so to hide his shame, Joachim retreated to the hill country to live among the shepherds and their flocks. And as he was praying, his wife Anna was praying at the same time at their house in Jerusalem. And an angel appeared to both of them and announced that Anna, who was barren and of older years, would have a child whose name would be known throughout the world. And Anna promised that if this came to pass, she would offer her child as a gift to the Lord, a promise which was fulfilled with the entry of the Theotokos into the temple. So Joachim returned home, and in due time, Anna bore a daughter, Mary. Now, unlike the birth of Christ, there was no star fixed overhead for the birth of Mary. Shepherds and kings and wise men did not journey to the bedside of Anna offering gifts or falling down before her in worship. No earthly king plotted her demise. Her birth was in all things normal, unremarkable, and fully human. And this, of course, is how it had to have been. The church has never held Mary as some sort of a divine creature. Rather, to be sure, remarkable, but only in the sense of her entirely human virtues of obedience and piety. But she's always been celebrated for those fully human qualities. Because for Christ to take on our nature, he must be clothed with the nature of of his human conception. This means that his mother, the Theotokos, must bear the precise same human nature in order to take it upon himself 
and to redeem us. St. Gregory Nazianus writes that if anyone has put his trust in Christ as a man without a human mind, he's truly bereft of mind and unworthy of salvation for that which he has not assumed, he has not healed. But that which is united to his Godhead is also saved. You see, we cannot admit the Theotokos to be by nature anything other than of the same fully human nature that we all bear. Otherwise, we admit an incomplete or an ineffective redemption. For this reason, we reject innovative doctrines like the Immaculate Conception, which would ascribe to Mary a beginning in the flesh that's different from the beginning of, com of the common humanity that Christ will come to save. Now, a skeptic might ask, why then do you celebrate this regular, unremarkable birth and at this event that's not distinguishable from the billions of births from the beginning of time to the present? And in fact, there are modern sects like the Jehovah Witnesses and some Hebrew roots groups that rail against the celebration of any birthdays as heretical and pagan. But the church has always understood that when we celebrate things which may seem mundane, it's not the material thing we truly celebrate, but that which has been blessed by God and is worthy of honor for that very reason. If each person is born formed in the image and the likeness of God our Creator, how can we fail to celebrate that each and every miraculous birth? For truly, they're all miraculous in that sense that we all bear in ourselves the image and the likeness of our Creator. But the birth of the Theotokos is celebrated because while she was fully human and her birth was unremarkable as a birth, to dismiss her as unremarkable, or as like many modern evangelical sects will say, just another woman, is truly grievous error and truly, I'd say it's scripturally illiterate. But whatever woman, do, what other woman does scripture ever say that all generations will call her blessed? What other woman is called blessed among women? What other woman has been chosen out of time to conceive of the Holy Spirit and bear the eternal word of God. Find me another woman, then you can tell me that the Theotokos is just like any other woman. Now her birth that we celebrate may be unremarkable, but she is anything but unremarkable. In her birth, St. Andrew of Crete says that the present feast day is for us the beginning of feast days. With the birth of the Theotokos, the, a boundary is placed upon the law and on the four types of the scripture. As the old covenant is bound, a doorway or a gate, as we sing in the Vespers, a doorway to grace and to truth is created. The nativity of the mother of God has as its purposeful end the uniting of the word with flesh. She's not the lawgiver and she does not change the law but as the one who will give birth to him who fulfills the law, the curse of the law is now bound in time. It is only a matter of time before the law is to be fulfilled. And those who live under the law as under a schoolmaster soon will live by grace. And those held captive in, a in Hades under the penalty of the law by which no man was ever saved, they can now rattle their chains for the time of their release is drawing near. St. Andrew of Crete also hymns the Theotokos in a Trinitarian formula. O Bride of the Father, Immaculate Mother of the Son, and Holy and Resplendent Temple of the Holy Spirit. O Most Chaste of all creation, most suitable to his ultimate purpose. On this account the universe was created, and by thy birth was the eternal will of the Creator fulfilled. One cannot be a Christian and deny the integral role of the Theotokos in God's plan for our salvation. One cannot proffer belief in an incarnate God and reject the mother whose flesh he took on. One cannot claim salvation through the voluntary suffering of Christ on the cross while at the same time scoffing at the voluntary obedience of she who annulled the disobedience of Eve through her humble acquiescence to the shocking message of Gabriel at the time of the Annunciation. So brothers and sisters, as we depart today, let us celebrate with joy the unremarkable and truly human birth of she who would prove to be the most remarkable of women. Let us give thanks to God that by his grace and through her obedience, 
our human flesh would soon be joined to his divinity, and that by his mercy we all may be saved. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Thanks for listening to Hill Country Homilies. For more information, visit Holy Annunciation Orthodox Church at www.annunciationtx.com. And please join us again next week.